Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie opens in Budapest, where IMF agent Trevor Hannaway is pursued by three agents, whom he shoots and kills. He successfully intercepts a suitcase with classified files, from a courier during his assignment. However, as he is about to receive a telephone alert about an assassin, he is killed by a French contract killer, identified as Sabine Moreau, who then takes the briefcase of files. Next, in Moscow's Rankow prison, veteran IMF agent Ethan Hunt is incarcerated. Hunt had been imprisoned for cold-bloodedly killing six Serbian citizens, and being held responsible for the heinous murder of his wife. As he is extracted and rescued by IMF colleagues, including Hanaway's team leader Jane Carter, and newly promoted high-tech wizard Benji Dunn, Hunt risks the mission, by returning to find his source of information and fellow prisoner Bogdan. Dunn closes the security office, and opens the cell gates, to thwart the guards and cause a prison riot. In the process, Carter finds herself in an underground sewer, where Hunt and Bogdan arrive shortly after. The rescue mission is successful, and they get into the van. As the IMF team pulls away from the Russian prison, Carter describes Agent Hanaway's failed mission. He was only supposed to intercept a suitcase, from the courier identified as Mark Stefanski. With a quick stab of his spiked signet ring, Hanaway easily drugged Stefanski, and stole the files in a bag. The warning about the killer's identity on Hanaway's cell phone came too late, and Sabine Moreau shot him. He died in the arms of his girlfriend, Carter. More importantly, the files contained Russian nuclear launch codes, desired by an emerging extremist, codenamed Cobalt. Moreau is thought to have delivered the launch codes to Cobalt, a nuclear strategist for Russian intelligence. The only way to know Cobalt's true identity, is to infiltrate the secret Kremlin archives in Moscow, and find the files that identify him. Hunt impersonates General Anatoly Fedorov, a Russian intelligence agent, to get past security checks, and Dunn pretends to be his attaché's assistant. With an elaborate setup inside the Kremlin, Dunn and Hunt create a diversionary tactic. They trick the Kremlin guard into believing, that the hallway to the archives room is shorter than it is, by using a light screen, that acts as a hologram, projecting the illusion of the hallway behind it into the guard's eye. After gaining access to the archives, Hunt discovers that Cobalt's identification tapes are blank, because they were stolen by Cobalt himself. Cobalt broadcasts his location, and alerts the Russians, thus implicating Hunt and the team as the cause of the break-in. When the mission is aborted, Hunt flees the scene, and crosses Cobalt in the corridor, carrying the briefcase with the Russian nuclear launch control device. Hunt changes into tourist clothes outside, but shortly after that, is stunned by an exploding bomb, which destroys the Kremlin. Following a mild concussion, Hunt wakes up handcuffed to a hospital gurney. He learns that the official explanation for the bombing, is a gas explosion under Kremlin Square. Russian agent Anatoly Sidorov, identifies the framed Hunt as the leader of the attack. Hunt removes his handcuffs, and escapes to the ledge of a building, where he avoids capture by climbing into the back of a moving van, and falling to the ground unharmed. At a rendezvous point, Hunt is extracted by the IMF. Hunt meets with IMF Secretary and Chief Analyst, William Brandt during the transport. The Secretary is headed to Washington to resign, after the IMF was blamed for the Kremlin bombing. Hunt learns that Cobalt has been identified, as a Swedish-born Russian nuclear strategist, dismissed as a professor of physics at Stockholm University. The deranged physicist was accompanied by his right-hand man, a well-known operative named Marius Wistrom. Now that the Russians are involved, in a global nuclear bombing terrorist plot, the White House denies the existence of the secret IMF agency, by invoking a dreaded black ops contingency measure, called Phantom Protocol. It means, no satellite, shelter, support or extraction. Although Hunt cannot be returned to Washington, to be punished as a rebel extremist by the Defense Department, he can escape government custody, and operate and track Cobalt independently. If caught or killed, every member of his team would be branded a terrorist. Suddenly, the van is attacked by Russian security forces. The IMF secretary and driver are killed. The vehicle plunges into a river, and Brandt and Hunt escape underwater. They board a green freight train car. At a control center manned by Carter and Dunn, they see a video of a speech given by Hendricks. The psychotic nuclear extremist preaches nuclear annihilation, hoping to start a new phase of human evolution. Simply put, the destruction of the world is an unfortunate, but necessary part of evolution. Sabine Moreau has the nuclear launch activation codes, and plans to meet with Wistrom in about 36 hours, at the Burj Hotel in Dubai. With the codes, Hendricks could launch a nuclear missile attack against the United States. Meanwhile, Polish-born cryptographer, Leonid Lysenker, is kidnapped from his apartment by Cobalt and Wistrom, and his wife Anna and son Alex are killed. Now out of the loop, 
Hunt describes the objective of their unauthorized IMF mission to his three agents. He says their goal is to intercept the sale, replace authentic codes with fakes, and follow Hendrix. Carter is happy to have the opportunity to get revenge by killing Moreau. Still, Hunt points out that their main target is Hendrix, not Wistrom or Moreau. Hunt's team members discuss the plan in their hotel room on the 119th floor, set up as a control room. They plan to build a duplicate decoy room, to fool Wistrom into thinking he is meeting with Moreau, impersonated by Carter. In a room on the 118th floor, Dunn would impersonate Wistrom, and meet with the real Moreau. The main requirement however, is control of the elevators and security cameras. This means that Hunt has to access the hotel's 130th floor server room, from the outside of the building, within 30 minutes. After cutting a large pane of glass in his own room, Hunt climbs the outer panes of glass, with the help of adhesive and magnetic gloves. He then cuts through the glass in the server room 11 floors above, and breaks through the opening to gain access to the hotel servers. The rooms on the 119th floor are renumbered 118 as part of the plan. But their precise plans are disrupted, when Moreau arrives early, and Wistrom is unexpectedly accompanied by Linsker, who is there to authenticate the launch codes. To return to the 119th floor, Hunt repels down an uncoiled rope that is not long enough. He has to make a spectacular freefall jump, to get back into the open window. The team is forced to improvise, when the machine to create the masks fails. In a quick change of plans, Hunt decides that the real launch codes had to be swapped with Wistrom, and that he and Brandt would boldly impersonate Wistrom and Linsker. On floor 119, Carter, impersonating Moreau, meets the real Wistrom and Linsker, while below, on floor 118, Hunt and Brandt, impersonating Wistrom and Linsker, meet the real Moreau and her three bodyguards. Both IMF teams convince Moreau and Wistrom, that the exchange of codes and diamonds can be made. At the same time, Benji, who is acting as room service, replaces Wistrom's real diamonds with fake ones, and delivers the real diamonds to Moreau for authentication. After the launch codes are confirmed by Linsker, Wistrom quickly leaves the room, and shoots Linsker in the elevator hallway. In the other room, after a successful exchange, Moreau cleverly identifies Brandt as an agent, when she notices a contact lens over his left eye, and escapes. Carter chases Moreau one floor down, stops her, and leads her at gunpoint, into the squad control room on the 119th floor. Moreau attempts to kill Dunn. After a struggle, Carter throws Moreau out the open window, and kills him. Hunt chases Wistrom, who has the codes in the lobby. Hunt is held back for a few moments, to fight Russian agent Cedarov, before pursuing Wistrom, as a sandstorm engulfs the entire hotel and the city. The foot race evolves into a thrilling car chase, which ends with a collision, and Wistrom escaping into the back of a truck. As he drives away, Wistrom removes his face mask, revealing himself to be Hendrix in disguise. When the IMF team reconvenes, Brandt accuses Carter of compromising the mission by killing Moreau, and Hunt accuses Brandt of being more than an analyst, with his display of IMF agent skills. Brandt describes his past to the others, he was in Croatia as a protection agent, to ensure the safety of Hunt and his wife Julia, when a Serbian hit squad killed Julia, and he decided to leave the IMF as a field agent. He still feels guilty and responsible for the incident. Meanwhile, Hunt contacts his intelligence agent, Bogdan, and his arms dealer cousin, to gather information about Kurt Hendricks and his whereabouts. Hunt says the enemy has the launch codes, but they would need a tactical satellite, and he would like to know where he could get it. The arms dealer mentions that Russia has quietly sold an obsolete tactical satellite, to a certain telecom in Mumbai, and that it would take special skills to turn it off. After speaking with Hunt, the cousin informs Cedarif by phone, and offers to retrieve both the Kremlin stolen launch codes, and the American Hunt. Traveling by jet to India, the IMF team identifies its target, Brijnath, a wealthy playboy, Indian telecommunications and multimedia tycoon who has built his seemingly state-of-the-art media business out of Cold War trash, including a Novosti satellite. Hendrix needs the defunct Soviet military satellite to launch a nuclear strike. The team must obtain the access code to the satellite from Brizhnev, to shut it down, before Hendrix programs it to launch a nuclear missile. Dunn says this requires manually accessing the central server to knock it out. Brandt must enter the server room, by repelling down a narrow tunnel above a large turbine server fan, crossing the central server exhaust duct, floating in mid-air above the computer array, and connecting to the panel to disable it. Hunt transmits to him the stolen access code to deactivate the missile, and uses it to pinpoint Hendrick's location. At a lavish tuxedo party, while Hunt directs the team's plans, Carter, dressed seductively, acts coyly to attract Brijnath's attention. She lets Hunt kiss her in plain sight, and then lets Nath entice her, 
to show her his private art collection in his bedroom. However, Hendricks and Wistrom enter the headquarters of Sun Network, where he connects to the satellite, reboots it to its original military specifications, and downloads a virus from the satellite, to kill the central server where Brandt and Dunn are working. Hendricks effectively takes the server offline before the IMF can kill the satellite. Then, after reprogramming the satellite, Hendricks can launch the nuclear missiles in five minutes. With a stranglehold on his neck in Nath's bedroom, Carter forces the Playboy to reveal the satellite access code override sequence, which she transmits to Dunn. The information also unlocks Hendricks' location, 6.7 miles from Hunt. With Cedarif on his heels, Hunt leaves the group, and drives away in a vehicle to the TV station, where they hope to delay Hendricks' nuclear missile launch, and meet up with Brandt and Dunn. However, they have only about three minutes to counter Hendricks, who had already armed the satellite, and uploaded new authentication codes to lock the Russian Central Command out of the system, so that the launch cannot be verified. He sends a signal to fire a single nuclear warhead, from a Russian nuclear submarine, submerged in the Central Pacific, targeting San Francisco. He hopes it will be interpreted by the United States, as Russian retaliation for destroying the Kremlin. Hendricks also contacts the submarine commander, and tells him to cease verification efforts. Hunt knows that the only option left to him, with time running out, was to abort the warhead. He must quickly get to the launch device in the steel case, which is in Hendrix's possession. As Hunt and Carter approach the front of the TV network building, Hendrix flees on foot. Wistrom re-enters the building, and attempts to disable the TV station relay by ripping out the computer cables in the network control room. He also fires at Carter, wounding her in the abdomen, and then turns off the building's main switch. Dunn and Brandt suddenly appear as reinforcements. While Dunn struggles to bring the station back online, to transmit the outage codes, Brandt chases Wistrom into the power room to restore power. Hunt pursues Hendrix for the launch control device, inside a multi-level circular parking lot. After a fight against Hunt, on a series of moving car ramps, Hendrix does a somersault to his death with the briefcase, hoping to ensure a successful launch. Concerned about Brandt's long absence, Dunn follows, confronts Wistrom, chokes Brandt, and kills him. This allows Brandt to hit the main switch, to reactivate the transmission relay to the satellite, and allows Hunt to transmit a deactivation signal to the satellite and the missile just in time. With only one second left, Hunt presses the launch device button to disarm the missile. In flight, the deactivated missile hits and damages the top of San Francisco's Transamerica building, before plummeting harmlessly into the water. Cedarif arrives with armed support, and suddenly realizes that Hunt has aborted the nuclear missile. Eight weeks later, the four surviving members of the IMF team meet for a beer in Seattle. Hunt then offers the eager agents a new assignment, delivered on individual cell phones. Still, Brandt is the only one to refuse the new mission. He believes he failed his previous mission in Croatia, when Hunt's wife Julia was murdered. The twist in the film is Hunt's revelation, that her death had been secretly staged as a pretext to kill six Serbs, and be imprisoned in Russia, where he could use Bogdan as an informant to get to Hendrix. Relieved by the surprise admission, Brandt shakes Hunt's hand, and accepts the new mission. Hunt observes Julia walking off into the distance, after smiling at him. She disappears in a cloud of smoke, as she heads off on her next mission, to confront an emerging terrorist organization known as the Syndicate. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.